In today's video I will be looking at Unit 2 of the Edexcel exam board and in particular I will be covering shapes of molecules and ions and also looking at carbon allotropes. Let's first look at covalent bonding. There are two reasons why covalent bonds form. First of all because when you share electrons we have a much more stable entity unlike when there are two separate atoms. Many atoms, especially hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine, share electrons to get a noble gas configuration. However, some compounds can have where one of the atoms has more outer-filled electrons than the other, for example, beryllium fluoride. Useful way to work out how many bonds there are, we can use the dot and cross diagram. First, we need to draw the outer electrons for each atom in the molecules. So in the example of ammonia, which is NH3, nitrogen, because it is in group 5, has five valence electrons, which we can represent either with dots or crosses. Hydrogen is in group 1, so it has one valence electron. In step 2, for the atoms with the fewest electrons, we need to pair the electrons with the electrons from the other atom as shown here. And also note that nitrogen in ammonia has one lone pair. In total we have four pairs of electrons, three of which are bonding pairs and one lone pair. The electron pair repulsion theory is a model that predicts the shape of a molecule around a central atom. First we draw a dot and cross diagram like we just did. We then count up the number of electron pairs which includes bonding pairs of shared electrons and non-bonding pairs of electrons. These pairs of electrons repel each other because they have the same negative charge, so they will try to get as far apart as possible to minimize those repulsions. If you have two pairs of electrons, the shape will be linear, bond angle will be 180 degrees, as shown here, around the central atom. If we have three pairs of electrons, the shape will be trigonal planar, the bond angle will be 120 degrees, as shown here. Four pairs of electrons, the shape will be tetrahedral, and the bond angle, as shown here in methane, will be 109.5 degrees. Five pairs of electrons, the shape will be trigonal bipyramidal, there will be two bond angles of 90 degrees, and 120. And finally, if we have six pairs of electrons, the shape will be known as octahedral. The bond angle will be 90 degrees, as shown here. These are the molecules that we need to know about. Beryllium chloride, methane, ammonia, water, carbon dioxide, and so on. We have the number of bonded atoms, the molecular shape, the example and what um, the shape would look like in 3D. So, for example, for ber beryllium chloride and carbon dioxide, the shape will be linear because we only have two bonded atoms. For water, we will have a bent shape, as shown here, and for ozone and sulfur dioxide, it will also be bent. Don't forget to show the non-bonding pairs, so the lone pairs of electrons in the dot and cross diagrams. Lone pairs repel because they are attracted to a single nucleus and not shared by two atoms. The lone pair repulsion means that there is the reduction in the bond angle between the bonding pairs. Each lone pair of electrons reduces the predicted bond angle between bonding electrons by approximately 2.5 degrees. Here I have an example of ammonia. We have the central nitrogen atom and three hydrogens bonded to it. Three bonding pairs, but we also have one lone pair on the nitrogen, which I didn't put on. So overall, the shape is tetrahedral, but the angle is reduced from 109 to about 107.3.5 because of the greater repulsion from the lone pair. 
also for water, we have two bonding pairs. So we have oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen. But the oxygen also has a lone pair. So this again means that the bond angle will be reduced to 104.5. Let's look at situations when there are multiple bonds. Electrons in double or triple bonds count a, as one pair for the purposes of determining the shape of the molecule. So for example, the carbon-carbon double bond in ethene counts as one pair and the triple bond in ethine also counts as one pair. Carbon-carbon double bond has a sigma and a pi bond as shown here. The sigma bond is in the middle and the pi bond is above and this doesn't allow rotation about the double bond. If it does rotate, that means that the pi bonds will break. Whereas in a single bond, there is only a sigma bond without the pi bonds, meaning that it can rotate. The carbon-oxygen double bond may be stronger or weaker, as in the carbon-carbon double bond, than the corresponding single bond. This means that there might be slightly more or res less repulsion. I have an example of carbon dioxide and ethene. As we can see, we have the central carbon atom, which is bonded to two oxygens. Because there are two bonds, even though they're double, we only count them as one bond, which means that it will have a linear shape. So the bond angle will be 180 degrees. In ethene, the carbon-carbon the double bond counts as one but we also have the carbon-hydrogen bonds, which means that the shape will be trigonal planar. We also need to know about shapes of ions, and the shapes of ions are predicted in the same way as the shapes of molecules. The only thing to be careful of is that each negative charge means that there is an extra electron and positive ions are short of one electron for each positive charge. But the ammonium ion has eight electrons in the outer shell, not nine, all of which are bonding. Therefore, it has a tetrahedral shape, like methane, and a bond angle of 109.5. We can see dative covalent bonds, in which both electrons and the bond come from the same atom which is usually represented by an arrow as shown here. Carbon is an allotrope. It has two main forms and this is because of the difference in molecular structures which is as a result of a difference in bonding. Four allotropes that we need to know about are graphite, diamond, fullerenes and carbon nanotubes. Let's first look at graphite. In graphite, carbon atoms are arranged in layers carbon is strongly bonded to three other carbon atoms with a bond angle of 120 degrees. The layers, however, are weakly bonded and the fourth electron is delocalized, which means that it is free to move around. Therefore, graphite can conduct electricity because the current is the movement of electrons. In diamonds, each carbon has four identical bonds to neighbouring carbon atoms. The arrangement is tetrahedral in diamond. Fullerenes have 32 or more carbon atoms. So, for example, the Buckminster fullerene, which has 60 carbon atoms. And in fullerenes, each carbon is bonded to three other carbons. The fourth electron is delocalized, but unlike graphite, it cannot conduct electricity because the electron that is delocalized cannot move between the molecules because it is trapped inside. Fullerenes have uh, similar chemical reactions to alkenes. And finally, carbon nanotubes, which are like fullerenes but come in tubes. They're very small and stiff. You can also embed them in polymers, which allows them to conduct electricity, and they're very strong. They can also be used in medicine, where we can use a carbon nanotube and at what end of it, to seal it, we can use a fullerene ball, as shown here, which is called a buckyball. And inside we can trap a type of medicine, which then can be delivered to specific parts of the body. 
radioactive radon-224 is put inside a buckyball, which is shown here, which has 60 carbon atoms, which is covered in tumor-targeting antibodies, which is then injected into a patient and can be absorbed by a cancer cells in the body. And because radon is radioactive, it emits alpha rays, which then can destroy cancer cells. But the alpha rays do not affect other tissues because their range is very short. And here is a picture of the layers of graphite. We can see the diamond, the tetrahedral arrangement, and every carbon is bonded to four identical carbon atoms. Here is a buckyball, which is a type of fullerene, where we can trap medicines inside to deliver them to specific tissues, and a carbon nanotube. To finish off, let's look at some questions. So question one, which of the following molecules has the smallest angle? So we are given a water, NH3, methane and SF6. In water, we have two bonding pairs and one lone pair on the oxygen. There is one lone pair on the nitrogen and there are three bonding pairs. Because of the lone pair, the, the main H-NH bond will be reduced to, to 109.5 because there is a greater repulsion. Then we have methane, which has four bonding pairs which means it has a tetrahedral arrangement, so the bond angle will be 109.5. And finally, we have the octahedral arrangement, which has a bond angle of 90. So D will have the smallest bond angle at 90 degrees. This question concerns the shapes of molecules and ions. So A is for linear, B for trigonal planar, C for pyramidal, and D for tetrahedral. Select from A to D the shape of A boron trichloride. We have three bonding pairs. The molecule will be trigonal planar, which is B. For the ammonium ion, because of the four hydrogens and the plus, so there are four bonding pairs, which means it will have a tetrahedral arrangement, so D. And carbon dioxide, there are two bonding pairs, therefore it will be linear, and it will have a bond angle of 180 degrees.